ahead on 100 Mile Meals. A journey is its own reward, right? But even better when you eat something delicious in Moss Landing. We'll show you how to end up with a great bowl of chowder by beginning with a custom approach. Is your yard edible? It can be, and there's an entire community willing to help. We'll go to Half Moon Bay and visit a fresh and spicy spot and see how Bernardus is literally growing its winery, tasting room, and reputation this year. That and more now on 100 Mile Meals. Hello everyone, I'm Romney Dunbar. Thanks for joining us for a new episode of 100 Mile Meals, celebrating all things foodie in Northern California. We're glad you're along to taste what's new from the field, on the menu, or in the glass. And we begin our tour with a local favorite on Monterey's Fisherman's Wharf. You don't get any closer to the bounty of the Monterey Bay than the Abilonetti Bar and Grill. This institution on Monterey's Old Fisherman's Wharf has been providing fresh, local seafood in a relaxed atmosphere for more than 60 years. It's casual dining, it's all about the food, great seafood, as much local seafood as we can find. It's been in Monterey since the 1950s, uh, synonymous in this area with calamari. Uh, we serve uh, tons of calamari. It's all local squid, uh, brought from the fishery into our kitchen to your table. And what goes better with fried calamari than french fries? We serve a lot of calamari and fries. So the quality of the fries is very, very important. And over the years, we've tried a number of different brands, but McCain's is the best. We get great uh, guest satisfaction from the McCain products. Uh, they cook up well, they hold well, and I wouldn't change. Abel and Eddie Bar and Grill's commitment to locally sourced products goes beyond its calamari, though. From Salinas Valley Produce, to barbecued sardines fresh from the bay. They believe local is always better. We have original and only antipasto bar, so a beautiful display of uh, mostly uh, vegetables from the Salinas Valley uh, and cheeses and things like that. Uh, also our mar great marinated squid right out of Monterey Bay. And we assemble platters of that for folks. Vegetarians love it. Uh, groups that come in will put platters of antipasto on the table and everybody really enjoys it. With the incredible produce available from Salinas Valley, everything you could possibly need or want, and the seafood. If everybody's curious about what's available that's local, with the Dungeness crabs, sardines, the squid, the sand abs, got some great local products to feature in the restaurant. Be sure to visit the Abilonetti Bar and Grill on Monterey's Old Fisherman's Wharf next time you're looking for a taste of the Monterey Bay. Hi, I'm Romney Dunbar. We're proud to announce our new program, 100 Mile Meals. Join us as we explore our local food market. From a farm or field, to the table at a local restaurant, or even your own home. We call it 100 Mile Meals. 100 miles is not a rule or requirement, just a reminder that fresh and local are two great ingredients and go together like sweet and sour, salt and pepper, or as Forrest Gump might say, peas and carrots. You know, and people are always enjoying it because you're sitting here and they'll ask you, well, where is this Pinot from? It's from 20 feet, right there. You know, they, and then uh, that really seems to get them excited because it's, it's fun to sit here next to the same vine that you're drinking. You know, it really is. Our program is a fun and informative way to get to know food culture of the Greater Bay Areas, her agriculture and the events, restaurants, and wineries that populate our area. Use our program and website, 100milemeals.com, as a resource to learn about new food ideas and sources and to get your message out to a fresh local audience. We use a long table with room for everybody for a 100 mile meal. We're really concentrating and focusing on what Monterey has to offer. Uh, and again, the food, uh, even our beef and steaks are from within 100 miles from this point right here. Being that we have our beautiful neighbor, the Salinas Valley, in our backyard, um, with this bounty of fresh vegetables and fruits of all kinds. Um, I really try to incorporate all that freshness into the menu. All of our food is 100% natural and as organic as it can be. So enjoy our program and enjoy using our program to reach new customers on TV, web, and social networks. 100 Mile Meals. Performance in a 100-mile market. Performance Food Service Ledyard, a local distributor of food, equipment, and supplies since 1929. 
family run for decades and now part of Performance Food Group, one of the largest food service distributors in the nation. That new relationship gives Performance Food Service Ledyard the benefit of purchasing power and the level of quality control that vendors and their customers appreciate. Performance Food Service Ledyard views itself as a partner with hundreds of food service operations and while earning trust has earned awards. Performance Food Service Ledyard has been recognized both locally and nationally with outstanding sales and service awards. But it's not the awards that count. It's the reward of working with the customer to profitably grow their business. Performance Food Service Ledyard, serving the 100-mile marketplace. Bernardus Winery. Founded by owner Ben Pond more than 20 years ago, with the goal of creating wines that flatter the palate and stimulate the imagination. Achieving that goal is a three-prong effort that begins in the vineyards where Matt Shea stewards these vines from planting to cultivation. This is the Ingrid's Vineyard and this is one of the first vineyards planted in Carmel Valley. It's planted to Chardonnay and Pinot Noir. It's especially important to our winery because it's so close to our tasting room. We can use it as a educational facility. We can take guests and walk through here and they can really get the hands-on experience. We're about nine and a half miles from the ocean right now, so we really get that maritime influence which allows us to grow the Pinot Noir and the Chardonnay. Unlike our other vineyards that are 25 miles further east where we grow the uh, Bordeaux varieties, the Merlot, the Cabernets and whatnot. We were kind of the pioneers in this area. We've stayed at a relatively small size so we can focus on our customers and really giving people that experience. We've eliminated herbicides from our program. We do all mechanical cultivation here. We pull leaves to create a, uh, a fruit zone that has ventilation and doesn't get mildew so we don't have to use sprays. So we're always looking for ways to uh, soften our approach to farming here. After harvesting, the grapes are moved to the winery, where winemaker Dean DeCorth handles the next phase of the Bernardist experience. When we first started here back in the early 90s, there was only a handful of wineries really in the whole county, and now they're just, they're almost countless, including all the small people that are doing a few hundred cases, up to the people that are doing several, you know, maybe 100,000 cases. We're kind of in the middle zone, we're about 50,000 cases total. Uh, roughly half of that's Chardonnay, which has been really, really a, a successful program for us, along with the Sauvignon Blancs. We do quite a few Pinot Noirs from little single vineyard areas, along with, of course, the Marinas. The way I look at it is, if you like dry, crisp white wines, and you don't like oak, then you can get a Sauvignon Blanc. If you like something round, buttery, a real traditional, like white burgundy style Chardonnay, we do that. And the reds, it's kind of the same. You've got sort of a soft, round, approachable red wine in all the Pinot Noirs, and then something more structured, a bigger, intense red wine, we have Marinas. Our vineyard manager, Matt Shea, is a really excellent partner for me. He's in charge of all the vineyards here in the valley, the, our own estate vineyards. We've worked a lot to improve those vineyards. I think it's another reason that we've been able to increase quality over the years. I never stop experimenting and stop pushing the envelope forward. You know, I've been doing this 30 years now, and I'm still discovering new things every year. Every year I experiment in little lots to see if I can make something better. So it's constantly progressing and constantly, I think, getting better. I think we're making the best wines now we've ever made at Bernardus. Finally, the fruits of this labor are ready to be enjoyed in the newly expanded Bernardus Tasting Room. We have a newly refurbished tasting room that has basically three venues where you can have an intimate tasting with two people or you can go outside to our great patio and up to a hundred people can spend time out there and drink wine. Bernardus Winery was the first tasting room out here. Others followed, but for many years there were only five here. Now there are 18 tasting rooms and uh, it's a lot of fun because more people are coming out. We are a destination. The greatest surprise and we hear it 99% of the time, truly 99% of the time is most people who don't like white wine or Chardonnay will come in and say, I don't like any Chardonnay, don't pour me Chardonnay. We pour them our Chardonnay, they buy it and walk out the door with it. We have a great winemaker in Dean DeCorth, and we have a great vineyard manager in Matt Shea, 
And the combination between those two guys and the source of fruit that we get makes for great wine. From the vineyards, to the barrels, to the bottle. The Bernardus experience is based on a commitment to quality. We're focusing on whatever it takes to create the best wine. So when you come out to the village, you're gonna know at Bernardus, you're always gonna get a great bottle of wine. Everything we do is by hand. Everything's picked by hand. I like to think that Bernardus Winery has a uniqueness to it because you have different personalities and each one of those different personalities expresses the Bernardus experience, but in a different way. Visit the tasting room at 5 West Carmel Valley Road or visit the website at bernardus.com. The Hot Enchilada is more than just a restaurant. It's an oasis. It's kind of a secret and a big surprise. We try to be really different because we are a destination and I understand that because we are a destination, you know, people want to find something different that they can't find in their neighborhood. Tucked away in the charming village of Moss Landing, we've seen this restaurant grow from humble beginnings to what it is today, a bustling cafe that is unmistakably unique. Kim calls her menu an eclectic fusion of cultures, and this is truly a culinary trip around the globe. We've got some Cuban dishes, Brazilian dishes, Spanish dishes. We've got a couple of French dishes on the menu. It definitely all has somewhat of a Latin flair because, you know, that's where we come from. That's where our roots are from. Being that we have our beautiful neighbor, the Salinas Valley, in our backyard, with this bounty of fresh vegetables and fruits of all kinds, I really try to incorporate all that freshness into the menu. One of the most popular dishes is the pescado cubano. It's a line caught snapper on a bed of black beans. It's crusted with pistachio nuts, and it's drenched in an avocado tomatillo sauce. Our Peruvian causa is also a very popular dish, and it's a beet-infused layer of organic Yukon potato with a beautiful olive tempanade layered, and then another layer of uh, saffron-infused potato. The hot enchilada also features a full bar with local beer, a well-selected wine list, and a number of unique cocktails. And while the restaurant's the center of the Moss Landing universe, there are quite a few interesting satellites as well. When we did our last segment, we had opened our first gallery, uh, which is behind the restaurant. And now we have another gallery called Galeria Dos, which means our second gallery, which is across the street. We also have a high-end couture consignment boutique as well. Both galleries serve as a venue to expose artists from Moss Landing and around the Monterey Bay area. The Hot Enchilada is also a great place for parties receptions and meetings and add the hot enchilada to your list of night spots and check out tango and cuban nights at the hot enchilada social club available for parties and events we can seat 60 people in the gallery and we can also fit 50 people in the restaurant comfortably as well as another 50 on the patio so you know we have a pretty versatile venue here we are right you know in between santa cruz and monterey county so we're a perfect place for people who need to have a gathering spot, whether it be a meeting place for eight to 60. So whether you're planning a large gathering or just looking for lunch, do yourself a favor. Stop into the hot enchilada. Daily we hear people say, oh, we drive by all the time and we've never stopped. When you stop, you are pleasantly surprised. It's a beautiful little oasis, beautiful gardens, Great food, I must say. It's a little bit of everything. The Hot Enchilada, 7902 Moss Landing Road, in the heart of Moss Landing. Grill has rejuvenated this traditional family restaurant space on the century-old Santa Cruz Wharf. And at the same time, it's helping rejuvenate the entire Wharf business district. The right combination of real mesquite grilling, fresh local seafood, and fantastic waterfront views is drawing record numbers out onto the pier. This is like a, a spot where people come and take mini vacations. 
Every night when it's like we pull up all the shades at sunset, it's beautiful. You can never get tired of that. One staple of all great seafood restaurants, clam chowder. Chowder soups and bisques here are a staple all right. Some 70,000 bowls a year are sold, or four to five 35 gallon pots a week are made. And a great finish begins with a great base, a custom base. This is when this started, really good chowder when they're using that kind of base. Right, and you see, I mean, uh, we cook a lot of chowder. We do a lot of chowder. We're doing like maybe between four, five, sometimes six batches of 35 gallons a batch. And every week. every week. Part of a really good chowder is it's just, it's, it's you can just tell in the bowl, right? I mean, just consistency and all of that. Right? Yeah, pretty much, the consistency is like that. And, you know, it's like creamy, yeah. nice creamy, nice taste. First thing I started is with the vegetables, with the vegetables and the bacon and butter and uh, sauteed it for a little while, a little bit. Then uh, after that, I add the clam base. It give it that good texture, good smoke, good smoke in the soup. You know? And uh, after that, I add the water and the clams and, you know, and, and uh, potatoes, bring it to boil. Then after that, like my root. Yeah. Just to finish it. Then uh, we add some heavy cream. This is why they make it really good. Yeah. The heavy cream is tasted really good. Good. So I have to do what you, what everybody wants to do, and that is I have to, the ultimate test of the chowder is, is right here, isn't it? Yeah, go ahead. Oh. Oh, yeah. It's good. It the bacon and the. Uh, well, clam bacon, and then, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's good. The Pacific Ocean out the window, mesquite in the grill, and custom starters in the chowder. Make this restaurant worth the trip and a 100 mile meal menu. Oh, yeah, the nice, hot. Nice, smoked taste. We actually feel very honored to have the ocean as our backyard. We're driven to purchase local fresh seafood as opposed to something frozen or flown in. You could say that fresh seafood is in Robin O'Connor's DNA. I love fresh seafood. It's my favorite food. I've been working in the restaurant business uh, pretty much all my life after high school, so it's in the blood. As the general manager of Half Moon Bay's Princeton Seafood Market, Robin's philosophy is to bring you the flavor of the ocean from across the street and right to your plate. One of our dishes, a uh, local favorite, is the halibut pesto. We take a nice uh, local fresh uh, halibut filet, charbroil it, uh, seasoned with McCormick lemon pepper, put it with some uh, red potatoes, top it off with a pesto cream sauce and uh, some local vegetables. People love the halibut, nice white fish. Uh, the lemon pepper goes perfect with it. A local halibut's caught right off of our shores. All the boats are right in the fleet in our harbor, and we buy our fresh catch every day. We have a black and blue steak sandwich. It's a black Angus flat iron steak, seasoned with a Montreal McCormick steak seasoning. We put some shaved onion strings on it, Stella blue cheese crumbles, a chipotle mayo, and a little garlic fries on the side. Well, all of our spices are McCormick, but we use a Cajun spice for a lot of our spicier dishes, a uh, McCormick lemon pepper for our chicken and seafood, and all of our Black Angus steaks get uh, Montreal steak seasoning. Whether it's seafood or produce, Robin says it's all about keeping the dishes as local as possible. Yapu Bay is known for artichokes and Brussels sprouts, so among other things, we feature those two uh, vegetables as much as we can. I think it's healthy for the community as well as the entire ecosystem. When you think of olive oil, don't automatically think of Popeye. We recommend you come on down to the True Olive Connection at 106 Lincoln Street in downtown Santa Cruz.
That's where you'll meet owners Susan Pappas and Mona Silva, who will share their vast knowledge of gourmet olive oils and aged balsamic vinegars. These hands-on owners have a passion for fresh oils and vinegars and want to share their fresh products with their customers and community. Stop in and experience your personal culinary tour. The True Olive Connection offers over 30 extra virgin olive oils harvested, milled, and delivered fresh from northern and southern hemisphere orchards. Among the many varietals are seasonal flavors, local gourmet foods, and body products. And now, two ways to shop at the True Olive Connection, downtown Santa Cruz and at the new second location in the Aptos Village Square. Your entire family's welcome to tour, taste, and make the True Olive Connection. The True Olive Connection, family owned and operated, 106 Lincoln Street, downtown Santa Cruz, and now at the new second location in the Aptos Village Square, and online at trueoliveconnection.com, Facebook, and Twitter. You don't have to be among the biggest to be among the best. The Big Sur Food and Wine Festival has earned its way into TripAdvisor's Top 10 Food Festivals of America list. And if you've ever been or never been, believe me, getting to Big Sur is an unforgettable journey. We're never the same. We change everything up all the time. This is our first year working with state parks and having this event here at this extraordinary location. I mean, here we are in a huge natural bowl We've got Mount Manuel behind us. We've got these beautiful spreading sycamores, some of which are starting to change color. Uh, we've got the redwoods. Uh, it's, you could not ask for a more serene, extraordinary location. You feel you're not just in another wine tasting event. There's like a whole community behind it. Because Big Sur is so small and it's just so organic. It works really seamlessly. Any reason to come to Big Sur is a good thing, but uh, this is a really prestigious event and a lot of really quality uh, wineries and uh, chefs and the cuisine is top of the line, the wines are top of the line, it just uh, attracts a good clientele and just a good place to be. I brought chirashi. Um, it's really easy to make and um, it's basically cooked vegetables and pickles. It's Osaka style, more Tokyo style would be more sashimi on uh, rice, sushi rice. Nice texture, it's, it's, you can serve at room temperature, it's easy, a lot of flavor. We brought uh, three different cheeses today. We brought our, uh, our East of Edom, and uh, we brought our uh, Unipero, which is a Swiss style, and then our, of course our Monterey Jack that, uh, you know, our Monterey Jack being one of two dairies left here in Monterey County, we like to brag it's the only place in the world you can still get a Monterey Jack made in Monterey, where it originated. So, uh, so yeah, we've got those three cheeses here today that we're sampling. It's somewhat of a social reunion, of course. Uh, we used to live down here for several years, so for us it's a chance to come back and see our neighbors. Um, but it's also, for me personally, like a real celebration of Big Sur in the autumn. You know, especially after this first rain, it's super clean, and it's just a way to really kind of dig deep and enjoy autumnal Big Sur. Yeah. What is really unique and special to me about Santa Cruz and the Monterey Bay is that we are, you know, in a, in a region with such an abundance of amazing world-class produce and seafood and winemaking that we really can live and live really well with so many uh, artisanal producers of, of cheeses, of breads, of, of wines that um, it's both kind of friendlier for the earth and kind of raises the consciousness and I hope changes the conversation in the domestic and international market to refocus on sustainable kind of ways to, to farm the land and, and feed people. The weather's perfect, the turnout's amazing. I mean, we got hit so hard, like the second it opened. So we're just happy to be here. For me, there's that feeling of great camaraderie and great generosity. And literally, people tell me, the wineries and chefs, if there was one event in the year that we would go to, it would be your event, Big Sur. And that speaks volumes to what this committee um, and, and organization as a whole has manifested. Big Sur Food and Wine spotlights this culinary destination awaiting year-round and helps raise money for the eclectic but close and supportive community here. 
The fire brigade, schools, health center, and arts programs all benefit from this three-day celebration of food, wine, and scenery. Here we live in Monterey County, which is uh, Pinot and Chardonnay driven. And I don't feel at all in any shape, form, bad about bring our wines in here. You know, when you go to a food and wine, it's not just one county. So I'm here to represent what we do here up in Sonoma. So we believe in what we do. The wineries are producing superior Bordeaux varietals like their Cabernet and their, their Malbec and their Petit Bordeaux. Everything is just ex um, um, extraordinary, amazing. It's basically the reward for, you know, driving you know, 5,000 miles during harvest and midnight punch downs and pump overs and, you know, reconnecting with old friends. And, you know, we do a little bit of business, certainly, in, in Big Sur. They have our wines at the Roadhouse. And, uh, but it's mainly just rest and relaxation and, and, and in a setting that I love. I, I do this for one reason, not exposure, to be honest. It's to give back to the community here in Big Sur. They drive 45 minutes to Monterey once a week, twice a week, and they always stop at our place. I'm talking about half the community here literally come to Sushi, and that's why I'm here to say thank you. Big Sur is kind of a place that I always go to get away and relax anyways, and you know, to come down and do some business here is awesome. Miss it this year? Don't worry. Big Sur is always open, welcoming and awaiting your next unforgettable journey down Highway 1. These gardens are not just appealing to the eyes, they are appealing to your taste buds. And that's the point of the annual Edible Garden Tour. A walking tour of gardens sponsored by the group Slow Food Santa Cruz celebrates urban gardens that don't just feed the senses, but help feed households. Our mission is good, clean, fair food for all. So that's essentially what we're promoting with our chapter here in Santa Cruz. Good is sort of about taste, you know, about flavors and about health. Clean is about sort of the environmental impact of the food, organic, etc. And then fair really, I think, is the most complicated facet of that whole puzzle because you're talking about fair prices for the, that good and clean food um, and also fair sort of labor, mm -hmm. labor practices and, you know, the folks that are growing and harvesting the food and making sure that that, that whole process has so, social justice embedded in it. People come on the tour to get new ideas about anything from pest control organically to um, water, which is a huge issue for us um, in this area right now. So it's a great way to learn new tips and tricks from people that have been doing it longer. One of those experienced gardeners is Joe Coberly of Edible Ecoscapes. Joe's home garden was just one of many examples on the tour. It was a blank slate and a bunch of old shrubs and designed it to be um, perennial fruit tree production and annual production as well. It started with enjoyment and hobby and um, realized that I could do it for a living and spread the passion to other people. A lot of people start with a little planter box and that's kind of the easiest way and then have them pick the vegetables and fruits they want to grow and then give it a shot. Very popular movement, people are understanding it, lots more people are doing it, they're catching on, they're seeing how much you can get off of your land, the health benefits, and just the enjoyment. Whether or not you really turn your yard into a food source, sharing smart gardening practices, such as stretching the water supply or choosing drought resistant and healthy fruits and veggies, is a fun way to be aware of the nature around us. And often, that nature is closer than we previously thought. We lose touch a lot of times with food in terms of you can go to the grocery store and get you know, oranges year-round, but really they have a seasonality and there's an important you know, connection to the land that I think has been lost in a lot of cases. So I think people having their own home gardens is a really great way to reconnect to the land and um, reconnect to where food comes from. Having the ability to grow your own food is essential to nutrition, to health, to our planet. Learn more at slowfoodsantacruz.com. Thanks for joining us for 100 Mile Meals, where you are the key ingredient. 
a chef, a restaurant, brewery, or a winery, we're here to help. Learn more at 100milemeals.com. And as always, thanks for joining us. I'm Romney Dunbar, so long. Brought to you by Performance Food Service Ledyard, the leading food distributor for our 100 mile market.